So here we are with another sculpting video. This time I'm making a piece of pizza that I drew a while back for a button design, a pin design. So I got my reference up in the corner right there. It's just a ballpoint pen drawing. Just laying out some basic shapes right here for the pizza. Normally this is the sort of thing I just do poly modeling. You know, including all the toppings, I just make them all separately and stuff like that. Uh, which I totally should have done. That's not what I did this time. I basically made everything one piece. Except for the eyeball, I think I made a separate mesh. But we'll get to that a little later. So here I'm just using the snake hook tool to create the, the dripping cheese right there. And at this point, this is back in October, um, I was still trying to figure out what brushes I should be using. It just required a, a lot of experimentation, basically. So here I'm trying to make the crust. Um, I definitely kind of start over a few times doing this. So I'm basically just hopping between a few brushes and trying to see what works best. Um, but you know, looking back at this now, because I made this in October, um, a few months ago, I would probably use the inflate brush to get those nice, like, bubbly, bulbous shapes, and then use like the draw sharp or the crease tool to go in between. Sorry if you can hear my cat meowing. Uh, he's looking for attention right now. He's very needy. So I, I've actually worked at a few pizza places and I like pizza a lot. I talk about pizza a lot and I eat a lot of pizza. And I draw a lot of pizza and I sculpt a lot of pizza. My current job is actually um, making pizza at a local bakery. But a few months ago when the pandemic started, uh, my department was kind of dissolved, so I haven't been working there lately, but eventually I will go back to doing that. So here I'm getting started on the skull-shaped uh, mushrooms. That's the way I see them anyway. Um, yeah, this is totally the sort of thing that you should just make all of the toppings separately, but I think as a challenge to myself, I was just trying to sculpt all of the details, basically. I think that's not the right way to do it for sure. And so this one, I was using the layer brush to build up the shape and then trying to clean up around it. Later on, I use a different method um, and I think it ended up working a little better. It just felt, felt more like drawing. So we'll get to that in like a minute. Definitely spent more time on lots of little details than I should have. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be zoomed out quite a bit. Um, you're not going to notice like the tiny little details in like the cheek area, things like that. Yeah, so since I've been out of work, I've been trying to get better at making pizza at home. I put a lot of that stuff on Instagram in my stories. So if you're interested in seeing me make pizza, I guess you can go there.
So here I'm just going through and trying to refine the, the dripping shapes, just making them a little neater. Making them look a little more organic and actually like they're dripping. What's your favorite type of pizza? Leave a comment below. Do you like pineapple on your pizza? I know that's pretty controversial. If you like pineapple, leave a comment below. If you don't like pineapple on your pizza, mm, well, I'm not gonna put pineapple on this pizza, but there's gonna be an eyeball on it. That's a pretty controversial topping. At the pizza place that I'm working at now, uh, we've made quite a few pretty weird pizzas. We're trying to have uh, special pizzas pretty regularly. We were going for uh, once a week, but I kind of changed it to more like once every two weeks or once a month, because we don't get a lot of business. It's mainly a bakery. And so we want to give people a bigger window to try the weird pizzas. So we had like a a banh mi pizza that was really good. It was like, um, had like tamarind barbecue sauce and some like pickled veggies and cilantro and stuff like that. It was really good. Pretty strange though. So here you can see my other technique that I was using was to mask it and then invert it. So. I basically just drew the shape that I wanted and then, uh, you know, I couldn't go outside of the lines really and that ended up helping um, as far as, you know, not affecting the cheese and things around it. It made it actually look a little better like it was, um, you know, just popping out of the cheese and not like emerging in a, like a, you know, an unnatural way. The only thing is that if you build it up, um, the edge can be pretty sharp of the mask and it can create some weird like artifacts and stuff like that. So you might, if you do this, you might want to like go back over and uh, smooth it slightly or retopologize or something like that. Um, I could see this being useful for quite a few things if you just want something jutting out. Um, you know, without too much of a curve. And so here I'm just putting the divot for where the eye is going to go later. I'm creating the mask again, and this time I am trying to leave a little space for the teeth. I don't remember what the brush is called, but there's like an extrude brush, something like that. Um, and it created that really sharp edge and that's because the, the mask has no fall off. It's just completely sharp. So it creates some weird artifacts. What are some other weird pizzas that I've tried? So one other pizza place that I worked at, they had a cheeseburger pizza um, and the sauce was just ketchup and mustard mixed together. And I feel like that was, a lot of people ordered it and a lot of people really liked it, but I don't think they understood how much ketchup and mustard they were really eating. I thought that was kind of gross. because people would sit down with a small pizza and just eat the whole thing, not realizing that they are basically just drinking a cup of, you know, ketchup and mustard mixed together. And it had uh, pickles on it too. It was pretty good, you know, eat a few bites of it, it was fine, but eat a few pieces, it, it ended up, it just felt like too much. 
So here I'm just going through uh, with the crease tool and sharpening the edges up a little bit. I'm going with the cloth brush right here and just seeing if I can get some good drips going. I end up not really using this a whole lot and um, sculpting in some drips later. Now I'm doing the, uh, the pepper. And so my thought behind this when I was drawing it is that it, they would be like little bits of bell pepper. This was originally for a pin design. I used to make pin back buttons and, uh, and sell them. And so I made a lot of original designs, um, you know, a few years ago. This was one of my favorites, but I don't sell pins anymore, really. That was back when I was drawing a lot more comics. And then once I got into Blender, I kind of just dropped everything else. I still draw, I still like drawing. Um, I originally wanted to do 2D animation. And once I started Blender, uh, I really liked the 3D workflow. So as you can see, I made the eyeball a separate uh, sphere right there. And I'm just sculpting those like kind of wrinkles around and then going through and adding some veins. And eventually I do um, restart the eyeball right here because I try to put um, another sphere around it to act as like the clear part of your eye. And it wasn't working out very well when I went into shading to check it. So I ended up just uh, bringing another sphere back in and sculpting the veins on again. So I do end up deleting this. going back through and starting the veins again, and I end up just drawing the iris and the pupil on later instead of, uh, you know, actually sculpting it. And so this actually worked pretty well with just the regular draw brush. S seemed to be uh, producing a pretty good shape. And then here I'm just, uh, UV unwrapping it to get it ready for drawing the eye on later. Do you all like it more when I talk about sculpting while you're watching the sculpt, or do you like it more when I just kind of ramble? Just talk about other things. So here I'm just unwrapping everything. I end up projecting from view right here, but I do end up going over and unwrapping because as you can see, it's like kind of creating some weird drawing artifacts. So right here, I just kind of separate everything right there. I come back and create a palette that I like, but I end up actually doing all that in the shader editor later and uh, do, you know tweaking the colors and stuff like that. So I started with the coloring process, but then I decided to do it more procedurally. And I basically just do everything in black and white to use as like a mask. So this was supposed to be a mask for the cheese to differentiate between the cheese and the crust. So I'm pretty much just getting the area um, that I want to be the crust right here. And I, you can, you'll see a little later uh, when I go to the shader editor, um, what I do with this. And then I have to go through and create masks for each topping. So for like the mushrooms and the pepper and stuff like that. So this is another reason why it makes a lot more sense to make all the toppings separate uh, objects. That way you can just, you know, you don't have to worry about masks like this. You could just assign a different material to each object and it would be much cleaner, much easier. 
And because I sculpted everything on, I had to find different workarounds for this. And I was thinking uh, making masks would be easier because then I could add, um, I could use them not only for color, but also for, you know, bump, bump map data and roughness and things like that. Whereas if I drew everything on, um, you know, then I would have to draw the roughness separately or draw the bump separately and stuff, stuff like that. So I ended up just creating a mask and doing all the other stuff in the shader editor procedurally. So making pizza at home has been pretty fun. Making the um, the dough and uh, the sauce is just canned tomatoes that I got at the supermarket. I think the hardest part is getting like a good dough recipe that seems reliable. And you know, there are a lot of different kinds of pizza out there. So you really have to use your own judgment for stuff like that. So here I am actually coloring these but I think I pretty much only do that for the, these mushroom skull things. I think hand painting these because they had a lot of little details, um, like the eyes and the nose and the teeth, I wanted to like be able to give it a, a kind of a painterly look and add a kind of cartoonish um, accents and shading and stuff like that. So. That's why I went through and just painted it on. That way I can add kind of like, you know, under the eye shadows and stuff like that. There was a little artifacting around the edges because I didn't UV unwrap that well. So I just UV unwrapped the eye and I'm just going through and uh, and trying to draw the veins on right here. And once again this was a situation where I didn't use the mask where I didn't use the mask technique because uh, I figured I would just make the whole eyeball the same roughness and I wasn't planning on adding any bump or anything so I just drew the color on. So here I am attempting to draw the iris of the eye and it's pretty stylized and I knew that. Um, I easily could have gotten some brushes or something like that. I was not, at this point, I hadn't tried bringing in brushes from an external source yet. So I was just using all the default brushes right here and just trying to add enough detail so that it looked okay from a distance and obviously it's stylized this whole piece is pretty stylized so I'm not going for a perfect circle um, what I'm really trying to do is from the camera view I want it to look similar to the drawing which was a little more oblong and elongated so you know up close it doesn't look great but from a distance with uh, you know the roughness turned up and stuff like that I think it ended up looking pretty good
So you can see here I'm setting up each mask um, is just a separate image texture or image node right there. And then I'm running them through uh, mix RGB and using those as the factor. That way the two colors, the two colors that you put in, uh, one of them goes to the black part of the mask and the other one goes to the white part of the mask. So here I'm just setting the lighting up quickly. Um, and I do have a second um, window off screen right here. That's why you couldn't see any of the lighting. But I was about to add bump, so I wanted to make sure lighting was in place. And so I'm just adding a few frames right here to um, just separate the, the bump, the color, and the roughness. That way it uh, doesn't get too confusing. I can keep track of everything pretty easily. For the sauce, I actually just use a noise texture. Um, with some yellow and some red, so at certain points it looks like there's a, like you can see the sauce underneath. I thought that was like a decent touch. And then you can use that for the, the bump too. I use a little noise for the mushroom skull too to make them look kind of like softer. And uh, here I'm just stacking up some Voronoi to give the crust a little bubbly look. And I eventually do use the same texture, the same Voronoi, for the color of the crust right here. You can see right here, it's like a, you know, like a tan and like a darker brown to make it look like the crust has a little color. So here I was thinking of adding a gradient to the eye and trying to set it up so um, so like the back of the eye is like a little more red than the front of the eye. It ends up being something you can't really see that well. And I also think about adding some subsurface scattering because you would think that uh, light would be able to like get into an eye. Um, and so I do like hop on the internet and search that real quick just to see if there's like actually an accurate value for that. But I think I just, I end up making it up. So here I'm just making the backdrop. Um, this is easily something you could do where you like render it with a transparent background and in a separate program like Photoshop or Affinity or GIMP or whatever, um, you could uh, just make the background in one of those programs instead. But if I can, I like to just stay in one program. And that way uh, the lighting can be affected by like the in-scene lighting too. And sometimes it ends up looking a little more natural. Other times it's not really worth doing. And now I'm just tweaking the lights a little. And, you know, that's pretty much it. This one's pretty much done. Like I said, uh, you know, I would have, if I were to do this again, I would create all the toppings as separate pieces. And I think it would end up being a lot faster and a lot better. If you want to see a tutorial on that, just me poly modeling a pizza, you know, leave a comment below. I might just do it anyway. And that's it. Here it is rendering. Here's the final version right here. Thanks for watching another sculpting video. There's a playlist here with all the other sculpting videos. And if you want to learn some stuff, check out the tutorial playlist. Have a good one. See ya.